Hello everyone, it's Carrie from sunshineinmypocket.com and today I have a really fun project for you. I'm going to show you how to take a regular size stencil and stretch it to be a slimline stencil. I'm using these very cute gnome images from Miss Ink Stamps and I've used quite a few of them here. Here's the, uh, the orange one that I did here and this little guy I turned into this blue one. You can see that I colored these up in rainbow colors. So I have used five gnomes in total and I've already colored them so that I can be ready to show you how to use these stencils. Now, the best stencil to use for this kind of a, a technique is one that has a repeating pattern on it. We're gonna stretch it out here. This is one of my favorites from Miss Ink Stamps. I love it. And because it has such small thin lines, I'm going to use pixie spray on the back. So I'm going to take this outside and go ahead and spray the back and then we'll be all ready to do this technique. Now this has dried for just a few minutes and I'm going to line it up right here in the middle of the slimline panel. And now I've got a bunch of distress inks in a rainbow of colors. I tried to match the colors that I colored the gnomes. So they're very similar in, in color tones. And so we're going to start by doing the green and yellow in the middle, and then we will have the blue and purple on one side and the red and orange on the other. So starting off kind of offset to the center, I'm going to start with the lightest color, which is yellow. And I find that this is the best way for me to start because I tend to kind of go over that color. And so it's, it's really great to start with the lightest and I spread it out just a little further than I normally would so that when I go over it with the other colors and blend it, it becomes a little smaller. I hope that makes sense. So now I'll go in with the green and we're just doing this just off to the right of center for this one. And again, I'm going just a little bit further to both the left and the right so I could get a good blend between the colors. Now here's where it gets a little bit tricky because we are going to do the orange, but we don't want to go over that edge of the stencil on the left. If you go over the edge, you'll get a line in your background and we definitely don't want that. So I'm being very careful not to go over the line. And for the right side, we'll go with the blue. See, that's why I lined up the gnomes on the top so I could see which color comes next because I'm not going in rainbow order as you can tell. I'm starting in the middle. So this really helps me out. So with the blue, same thing. I don't want to go over that edge there. I want to make sure that these are blended together beautifully, but not going over the edge. Now I'll pull that off and the pixie spray worked great. It didn't rip the paper. It didn't leave it sticky. So now I'm going to clean the stencil off completely and allow it to dry before putting it back on. I have to admit that I haven't used pixie spray that much. I use one of my old temporary adhesives, but this works so much better. It's such a light tack and it's still enough to go in with the stencil a few more times. So I love it. So now you can see I'm lining up that stencil, the left circle with the blue circle here. By lining those up, we're going to get a continuous pattern. And I'm just going to stretch that blue out a little before we go in with the purple. And this purple has quite a bit of color to it. So I'm doing a very light layer and look at how deep and beautiful that purple is. So now I'm going to line up the other circle here with the orange so that we can continue that orange color on the left. And then we'll go in with the red. And just like the purple, the red is a very vibrant and dark color. So I'm inking this on quite light and trying to just get a, just a, a small amount. I'm not pressing hard at all with this brush. So now I'll blend it out with the orange and look at that. We have a continuous stencil stretched out to fit on this slimline panel. And now I'm going to place the gnomes on. What I realized when I did this was that they kind of disappeared a little. They didn't pop as much as I wanted them to. So here's a trick for you. If this happens and your, your images are falling into the background, just turn it over and try lining them up the other way and look how much they pop because the color in the background is different than the color of the gnome. So I love this trick. This is how we're going to build this card today. 
And now I'm going to make a sentiment. This is one of my favorite pumpkin spice sentiment sets ever. You can build whatever sentiment you want. And today I am going to say, you're the spice to my day. So I tested it out first on my acrylic block that came with my stamp -a majig and it looks really great. So I'm going to stamp it down using some VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And you can see I only used a portion of the sentiment at first because for to get the day, I had to mask off a portion of what came in front of it. So I'm testing this out. Be sure you pull off that mask before you stamp it down. It looks really great. And to double stamp it, I put that mask on once again, then pulled it off and stamped it again. So this says you're the spice to my day. And now I'll place those gnomes on with some foam tape. Here's the last one here. Just gonna build those up and look how adorable those little characters are. To create a base for this card, I measured the panel and it is exactly eight and a half by four inches, four inches tall. So I cut the paper at eight inches and then scored it right in half at the four inch mark. That way when I fold it in half, it would be four inches by eight and a half and I could just glue that panel right on top and it fits perfectly. So here is our panel. I'm just gonna use some liquid glue to place that on top and that will finish our card for today using a stencil to a regular size stencil stretched out to fit onto a slim line. So you can use this with any of your stencils that have a repeating pattern. It's very simple to do to match that pattern up and keep it going. But take a look at how cute all these little gnomes are. I love them. You are the spice to my day. Very cute and a very a really fun project. I hope you enjoyed this today. If you did, be sure to give me a thumbs up. It really does help with YouTube and I will see you next time. I also appreciate all your comments. Thanks for stopping by. Bye-bye.